Welcome to me attempting to narrate myself making a bowl. Um, okay, there I'm just cutting off a piece of clay to make my bowl with. I'm speeding up that wedging process because it took a long time. This is reclaimed clay and it generally needs a lot more wedging just to really homogenize the clay. I use these masonite bats and that little pad of clay on the wheel is what I use to stick them onto the wheel and I just put like a little bit of water on it to help it really stick on there. Yeah and I'm just getting that bat wet, smacking that clay around and I'm gonna pop it onto the wheel head. Kind of squash it down with my hands and make sure it's really on there. Get my hands nice and wet. You do not want to be attempting to center or throw clay with dry hands in general. You can see that little ridge that I made on the bottom there. And then I use those the bottoms of my hands, like my pinkies, to just really squeeze the clay together and it has nowhere to go but up. Coning is such an essential step to centering. It makes it so much easier. You can see I'm kind of pushing the clay into the ball of my left hand. And as I'm doing that, I'm pushing it into the center of the wheel. And yeah, there you go. Nice little centered piece of clay. Now I'm just going to open up that ball using my two thumbs. This next step is, I feel like it's pretty crucial for, you know, setting yourself up for some nice even walls. I drag both of my thumbs across just to get a nice flat, even base and here I'm uh, I'm using my needle tool just to check the depth of that clay and yeah it looks pretty decent I don't do too much trimming on these types of bowls this is kind of like a ramen bowl and uh, I leave them with a flat bottom so I try to get away with as thin of a bottom as I can there I'm just compressing the clay to make sure it doesn't crack when it's drying or in the kiln and now I'm setting up for that first pull I kind of use this little claw method and most of the work is just with my left hand. I'm just pinching my fingers together and bringing that clay up and kind of wetting the clay with the sponge in my opposite hand to make sure my fingers aren't sticking as I'm doing that first pull. This is really just to set me up for the second pull where I'm going to try to get most of my height. Make sure, uh, you know, the clay is nice and moist which is a gross word, sorry for saying that. All right, yeah, here I'm setting up for that second pull. And this one's pretty crucial. I'm really trying to gain as much height as I can with that second pull, trying to even out the walls as much as I can, get my height, and then really set myself up for shaping. The shaping, I'm mostly just using my inside hand here. I'm doing a little bit of a pull at the same time, but mostly just pushing out with my inside hand, trying to get that width that I need to match the gauge. That little pointer tool is my gauge, and I, I throw all the bowls to that point on the wheel to try to just get them as high and as wide and as accurate as I can, so they all look somewhat, you know, the same. Here I'm just kind of finishing off with a little more shaping, just using my fingertips kind of refining the shape a tiny bit. And you can see it's just to the edge of that pointer. Flip that up, using my little chamois, my little leather to uh, compress the rim and smooth it out. And then I'll use this big trim tool to chop off the excess clay around the base. And a little surprise in store with this bowl, I'm going to switch it up on you and just chop this thing in half. wanted to show you the walls of this and what your walls, you know, like what you would want to aim for them to look like. If you're flattening out that bottom and getting a nice solid base, there's no reason why you should have excess clay trapped on the bottom of your pot. And you can see, yeah, those walls look pretty even. A little bit thicker on the rim, which is what you want. Nice, nice thicker rim. When rims are too thin, I feel like they're just brittle and just prone to breaking. Um, yeah, that's, 
that's pretty much it. That's that's my little ramen bowl throwing process. This is what it would have looked like if I didn't cut it in half and I would have <laughs> taken it off the wheel head and put it on my wireboard. <laughs> All right, so these bowls have had the chance to sit out overnight, get leather hard, ready for trimming, and I've had the chance to change my outfit. Here I'm tap centering the bowl. When I was first learning how to tap center, I would use a piece of bisqueware, which is super helpful if you don't want to ruin, you know, some leather hard pots by hitting them too hard or whatever be the case. Here I'm beveling an edge with my little triangle trim tool. Really, the whole goal is to match the base of the inside of my pot to the outside of my pot. So I'm starting off by just establishing where that point is and then I'll trim the rest of the piece to follow suit and the whole point for trimming is to just get rid of that excess clay and refine the shape. I want those inside walls and that inside shape to match the outside is essentially what I'm going for here. I throw the bases of these pretty thin because I like just a flat bottom. I like the profile, I like how it looks when these bowls are sitting with just a flat bottom, not like a traditional trimmed foot ring. I grab my sponge, wet the outside, clean up some of those trim marks. Still leave some of them. It's nice to, you know, recognize something's handmade and not have it be completely perfect. I grab my rib to get that slip off of the outside. And yeah, just clean it up a little bit. I'll use my finger and smooth out, smooth out that beveled edge a little bit. Taking off those little lugs of clay, using those to help keep it in place. Yeah, there's my maker's mark. Put my little stamp on the bottom. There you have it. There's your ramen bowl.